again it's Elizabeth here and welcome back to my channel welcome back to 2021 I hope you're all safe and keeping well today we're going to be looking at a trio of cards that are using these open framed patterns I've had a few requests to ask how I make this style of card so we're going to be using some new products and some old products so uh, different inks different tools i'm going to go in quite a lot of detail what you can use and these are the three cards that we're hopefully going to make by the end of today's set the first request of the year that i've had was from a lady in my facebook group who was asking how to make the most of these types of dies where you have a, a patterned, an open patterned frame that will produce a die cut, something like this. Now, I would say that these are more as um, background pieces for your projects and to add texture. So these are just a, a few of the types of frames that I have and when I'm thinking about a background, then I'm thinking of usually about colour. So if these are the frame to the colour, we need to make some background. So because I've got three types of frames, I'm going to show three different types of inks with different blending products because everyone has different things and um, I just want to give you some ideas to get going so we're going to work with each one of these frames and then I will show you the colours as we go along and the types of inks but the other thing that I want to mention are the mats that you can use so when I'm working at my desk just remember this is my other desk so I don't have everything to hand so I would use a glass mat this is my preferred um, crafting base. I'm used to it. Um, I do add other things at different times. If I am making um, uh, water watercolours and things like that. But generally, I have something like a glass mat. So it's whatever preferred one that you like. I also have a craft mat. And I'm going to use this today. Um, this one is from uh, Lisa Horton Crafts, but you can get them from other suppliers. But all it really is doing is protecting your work, but it also gives you a smooth base in which you can move your colours around. It also be something as small as this type of craft mat. What you're really looking for is something with a smooth surface in order to blend your inks onto the paper and talking of paper people will tell you about different stamping paper um, and different different types of papers for different pro this is a stamping card from a craft show it's very basic but really all i'm looking for is this smooth surface again it's round about 150 GSM different papers will give you different results but essentially for what we're doing today we're looking for something quite smooth and with a little bit of weight because we're only using uh, distress oxides and those types of inks so again this all comes down to personal preference you'll find that different tools and different papers will appeal to you so you can go along with craft companies that say buy buy this paper because this will give you magical results it may well do but you'll find that with a little bit of practice and with the tools and the right inks that suit you and the effect that you're trying to get you'll get perfectly decent the results. first die that we're going to work with is this particular loops and bubbles die and when I made the original card, I used a black frame, but I just want to explain to you that 
quite often when I'm prepping for something like this, I will die cut in different colours. And when we get to the stage where we're going to put the card together, I'll show you the reason why. But um, for the purpose of this particular card, we're going to work with this range of colours. So we've got worn lipstick, we've got squeezed lemonade, we've got speckled egg, we've got wilted violet and we've got blueprint sketch. So let's just move this down a little bit so that we're right in the centre. There we go. Now, these inks here, the Distress Oxides, are probably my favourite inks for ink blending and for stenciling because I like the matte finish. I like the fact that you can add water and other things to it afterwards to change the effect. And the tools that I like using with these particular inks are brushes. Now there are plenty of new brushes that are coming out. These are becoming increasingly popular. Um, but I will show you how I use them. When I first got these, I went with these smaller ones. But the time has gone on, I've acquired some bigger head brushes. And I prefer these. I try and keep them in colour families. Um, but I don't have so many of the white ones, so let's go with these lighter colours first. And then maybe we'll take one of these over here, and then a purple, and then a pink. Now I'm going to try and recreate a night sky. So essentially, we are going to have bursts of deep purples and blues and the touch of the pink but then we're going to imagine we've got some stars coming through the center here and this is where our light is going to come from so i'm actually going to begin with the yellow so this is our squeeze lemonade and i'm going to put some ink onto the mat that's a good a good use of these mats they do hold the ink really well and they allow you to take some colour off and hold it there for you. So I'm simply going to go through the centre here and with these brushes you'll find that you can blend from the mat and then you're coming across and through and it will depend where you want the darker and the lighter but try not to just take the first impression of the ink and then plonk it in the center of your mat these brushes are more forgiving than other tools but it's still not really the ideal way of getting this delicate blending then i'm going to move into a little bit of my speckled egg so this is almost like a grey a grey blue and again I'm taking some of the ink off and then I'm just going to come either side I tend to hold the brush near the top and all the time I'm going around in circular motions. There are other ways of doing it and just experiment and you will find what appeals to you the most. So this is like the nebula forming. Then we're going to move into our colours either side and I almost want to go with a rainbow effect. So I'm actually going to start with the wilted violet and again i'm taking off the ink this one's going to be slightly darker you can see that so i'm bringing it from the corner here and then just blending through if i was being really picky i would say that i prefer the blending from here with the bigger brush but these are the tools that i've got at the moment so that's perfectly acceptable 
going to take a little bit of the purple from here and again I'm just going to touch the corner like so okay now we're going to move into the blues we've got this deep blue here now this is a very moist um, ink so I need to take much more of this one off you can see it's almost pooling on this mat so let's just keep taking a little bit of the ink off and see what happens and I'm going to go from this side because I don't want all the darkness just to be on this edge so here we go that's not too bad at all now I'm feeling a bit braver I'm going to take a little bit more ink down there we go and you're blending this blue over the wilted violet I'm going to go a bit stronger again just taking it down and because everything is smooth it's all blending out and we'll go again from here and we'll take this blue up and through Make it a little bit darker. There we go. I'm liking the way that it's coming along, but we're still going to add this splash of pink to it to bring a little bit more warmth in. So I'm going to put it over here near the blue, and then if I want to mix it together, I can. And then we're just going to go through here. I definitely prefer the brushes with the bigger heads now so I think I'll probably end up getting a few more of those I will try and add links to some of the products that I've used but as you go through the video you'll see that quite a few of these products I will have had for a few years now so if you can't get exactly the same thing I'm sure you'll find a decent alternative but the key to this is really just to give it a play with the things that you have there's no need to go rushing out because I'm trying to to show that it's just about just as much about the technique and taking your time with it and giving it a go as it is the products that you're using Now, I really like the look of that, but the look that I'm going for, I want it to be a bit more blue. I do want it to look more like the night sky. So I'm going to go back in with the blue. I'm just going to tone down this pink. And this is where I think the oxides come into their own. Because you can play with how they blend together. And the textures that you're getting whereas with some of the other inks it's not allowing you that flexibility I'm going to go in again let's take a little bit of that pink down there we go The last thing that I want to do is to add a few droplets of water to lift some of these colours up. So let's get the brushes away. Get the inks out of the way. And I'm coming in quite high. So you almost want to come from one side and then just gently spray across your piece. Now, this is a cheap water bottle. I know that some of the branded ones will give you larger droplets of water and things like that, but I'm quite happy with the results that I get here. So you can see that that colour has lifted up and that's all I'm going to do to that one. I'm going to leave it to dry. Let me just lift this up. 
and you'll see the results that you're getting. And we're just going to wipe away these colours and then I will show you the next inks and the techniques that we can do with that. The next set of tools that I'm going to show you are actually an added extra to this video um, because I wanted to show you some of my older tools but before I do that I just want to go back to tools that I use a lot in my crafting which are the egg blending sponges now I got these quite early on because I like the way that you can hold them in your hand and you can add quite a lot of colour to your projects so let's just secure this down we are not going to use the whole of this card we're going to die cut into it so it's good to get into taping down your work and then you know that it's secure for whatever you're going to throw at it so these are my egg blending brushes and usually i use them with my distress oxide but the thing that i do with these is that i tend to keep the color on them so you'll find that when you come back to using it after a second time that you've still got colour on the egg so to speak and I like being able to use it in that way but what you can also do is add heavier colour so again I'm not going straight onto the card I always work away from the piece of paper get the colour onto my egg blendy and then this is the type of strength of colour that you can add to your project now this time we're just using an everyday stencil because again it's a good way of adding interest and dimension to your projects so I'm just going to show you how much colour stays on here and again it's always circular motions and you are building up the colour by going back and forth over the area so if you want a light colour that's one layer but if you keep coming back into it back and forth working it in and this is why the smooth card is so helpful but literally that was the ink from that tiny bit from the ink pad and it's still going then maybe once a month once every six weeks i will wash these with some um, bubble bath leave them to dry and then usually they're good to go i've had these i would say about or oh, at least two or three years they are beginning to disintegrate a little but they are still usable so we're going to let's just go in with some orange so again look that's an old that's an old egg that i probably haven't used since before christmas and it's still got color on it which is still usable and that's really good when you want an instant way to edge the sides of your cards because you've just got that little bit of colour without it being as heavy. There's little bits of dust forming and that's because these are wearing away a little but that's no problem. So let's get some ink onto here. So this is our spice marmalade. And again, we're going back onto our mat and then through onto our stencil. And we're going to go over the first fossilised amber, just blend some of those colours, leaving some white as well. 
and then we'll go back onto here let's see look still loads and it's almost like because you've got these distress oxide you're moving the ink around the paper whereas with some other inks you'll find that they sit there these are pigment inks and give you a chalky finish and you can add water and you can add ink sprays to them so we're almost getting two extra backgrounds for the price of one here <sighs> right now we want a slightly stronger color we're going to use the ripe persimmon uh, we're going with my red so I tend to keep all the colors in their families I tend to have a dark blue and a light blue because I use that a lot. Let's go in with this and I'm going to go straight through and over. And I think probably what will happen is I want to lift some of this colour off but we'll see how it looks. It might be that I end up blending a bit more. I think I'll blend some more of the orange back over there. There we go. lovely and then we'll just take this what we've got left from here bring this over and then this will be lovely for die cutting some letters out with and then you've got your own ready-made ombre effect mm, go I like that Uh, because I want to just finish this one off, I'm a bit distracted with this one now. But what I want to do is I want to have this ready for another project. So I'm just going to come back over with that orange. See if we've got any more orange on the mat. Bring this over. All the time, just blending, moving the sponge around. I'm actually working standing up today, but I prefer when I'm crafting by myself to be sitting on a comfortable chair, just taking my time and building up the colours. But this video would be very much longer if you saw me working in real time. Let's just get that last bit of yellow onto there. Taking it off our craft mat. This particular one I think is from Lisa Horton Crafts. And I will leave you the link below. I like it because of the quality of the mat that you can wash it and it will come spring back into life. And I like it because it's white and you can see the colours that you're using. So I'm just going to wash away these colours. This wasn't the one that I was working on, but uh, I get a little bit distracted when I start making these videos. We'll see how much of it makes the cut. Right, let's move back to this one. And we're going to gently peel this away. And that's a really nice effect. Can you see that there? So you've almost got like an ombre square result. It's got a little bit too much white on it for me. So again, I'm going to go back in with the orange. And let's see what happens. It's not the end of the world if we don't like it. But it's a little bit stark for me. So I'm going to go back in with those three colours again. You could use another stencil to give it another dimension. But let's just go with this for now. And go back in with that persimmon. And don't forget we are going to be die cutting into this. So you're not going to see these white edges. And then we want another little bit of the yellow. Just blend it across like so. There we go. Now, 
we've also got this stencil here so let's just take these tapes off because you can use every piece of your ink and take another squirt of this water another piece of the paper it's all getting a bit soggy now but not to worry Oops, got another piece of tape there. Let's take that off. Let's take this like so. And then our towel. Whoopsie. There we go. And then let's just see the impression that we get from the ink left on that stencil. Let's have a look. Great, we can use that in a journal or something. And then we'll just take these bits off, move the stencil around. I like that. Don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I'm not going to waste that ink. And then we've got one more bit there. Lovely. So then we've got two extras. But this is going to be the one that we are going to use for this particular card. Quite like that. Because you can move the squares around so that they're peeking through. I might use that one or I might go with my original plan. So let's bring in our next set of these. Now this is my original plan for my framed card here and again I'm thinking about the different colours that I'm going to be using so I might go with a black or I might go with a colour so that I had these distress oxides were one of my purchases maybe five or six years ago way before the distress oxides came out and I thought they were the bee's knees at the time um, but I haven't really used them since the Distress Oxide came out. They are uh, lighter in colour. They literally give you a Distress look. And I used to like using them with um, my brushes. And again, as time has gone on, when I first began crafting, I used to go with the smaller brushes. But now... I tend to prefer using the bigger the bigger tools and then working it in for longer. And the other thing that I like doing is adding colour with masks. So this is just a sticky mask and all I'm doing is taking the colour from my mat and again we're not going directly on, we're going across the mat the moss sorry and then onto the paper and this one's quite hard to show because you think nothing is happening so i tend to do a mixture of circular motions but with brushes if i hold them lower down then i can swish and swash them across it's the only way i can explain it really and you really do think that there's nothing there and you think crikey is this worth it but trust me it is so this is a type of technique that i would use for a background if i wanted a more subtle technique now let me just take away this mask I'll bring this to the camera and let's see if you can see the difference. I think you can see it from there. But you've got the white here, the colour's darker and then it's easing out. So we're going to just keep adding the colour. And let's go in with a few of these. Take a couple of the yellows. 
so that we can blend them together. And I'm glad to see that they're still in pretty good nick. Now let's get some colour on our brush. And we're just going to keep going back and forth, bringing the colour across. We want to go from a lighter colour through into a darker colour. So we're going to move the mask and we're going to go slightly across so that we've got some hills. Um, again, I haven't got a huge selection of these brushes so I tend to keep sticking the same colour family. So let's go with Spice Marmalade. All that really happened was I traded up the colours from my Distress, my Distress Inks into my Distress Oxides. Because I do tend to like the same colour families. I like the yellows and the oranges and the blues. I'm getting better with green. And I'm definitely getting better with purple now. But if you ask me what my favourite colour was, I d it's definitely blue. So I'm just going to keep going with this effect. And we're going to add... I'm gonna, I think I'll go with... Um, the candied apple just to bring a little bit of red into it just to make this it's almost like a sunset I find that the brushes that I showed you initially are easier to hold and to work with but it's entirely up to you if you have these brushes then you're still going to get a really good technique but um i i seem to get quicker results with the um flatter brushes there you go you can see the coloring don't worry about the center because again we're going to die cut into it but I am actually going to add some more red here because I'm almost going to turn this into a bit of a, a beehive on the card. We'll come to that. It's another way of getting a, an ombre effect. And this is very good for if you want to do background hills or the sky or the sea. There we go. I'm not going to work that one in too much. But those are your brushes and the very affordable and workable Distress Ink. So I have those in the minis. And I think I'll be using them some more because I, I enjoyed that. I'm going to add some water again. I just want to take away some of the block colour. Block colour will work but for the effects that I'm going for for these cards I want to have that kind of mottled look. So you can see from the tape that's come away just how much colour we've added to that. So let's go in with our water again. I'm not going directly onto it to begin with. That says it's not coming out very well. Let's just drop some on. We'll take our brush, just tap so we get ourselves some bigger droplets and keep going a little bit longer. The ink's not going to move 
away in the same way that it does with the pigment ink but it does still lift off some of the colour to give you a bleached effect so okay so let's press this down lift off some of that ink see what we end up with oh smashing I like that we've got more of a mottled effect there so we will leave that to dry the third set of tools that we're going to use are the original ink blenders that I had so these are your handles and then you add the blending sponge to the top and I used to use these all of the time but as soon as the egg blenders came out I moved on to those and when the the brushes came out you 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 develop and you change your technique as different tools come out so these were the first sets of inks that I bought well, easily over 10 years ago um, but I do every now and then add um, to that little collection so we're going to take some of the pinks and the blues and we're also going to try some of the to new inks that I bought for stamping with but I tend to find that I prefer them for blending and inking with my preferred stamps my preferred ink pads for stamping with tend to be the Versafine Claire the Versafine inks are very good generally but for stamping and for getting decent images i tend to stick with a versafine clair but as with everything go with what you find you prefer so that's a new ink so i'm presuming that one's going to oh, look lovely and squidgy so all we're going to do with these colors is go back with our earlier technique these these inks are still very wet so I'm glad that I've put them directly onto my mat. I just want to show you what happens if you do go directly onto your mat or onto your paper, sorry. So these ones used to be harder to work with. You've still got a little bit of ink on them and you can work with them but I tend to find that the sponge resists with the paper and if you take the ink and you go directly onto it can you see you get a much harsher result so you can blend it in eventually and again all you're doing is you're just moving the sponge around and going back over back and forth so because we want to try and counteract that part where we went straight in don't forget we are die cutting these so i'm not too bothered about that area but if you want to overcome it then take some more of your ink come to the opposite end and then go back to the technique that you want to use which is off on the mat onto the paper and then bring it up so that you've got more ink coming into your project so again you can see me that I'm changing hands because I I don't know whether it's because this is the last of them and I'm not so used to these now but I tend to have to work harder with these particular tools to get the same results I like that you can hold them at the top and I like that you can do smaller areas but if I was doing a big piece of colour blending I still think my preferred tools would be the eggs or the flat brushes so again let's try with a smaller one these are the same thing again and they're good for when you want to do edging let's just bring a bit more of this colour let's try this pink 
This pink's older. This is one of my older ink pads, but there's still ink on it. But these are good if you just want to touch the edge of your card or your your pick your project, and it's very gently adding colour. I'm hoping you can see that that there are two shades of pink going on there, and that's a very nice effect. Let's just keep working that in, see if we can get this one away a bit. So I'm using the same card all of the time, but I find that with these inks, they tend to, um, they're flatter on the paper. The, the oxides give you more to play with. It's almost like you're moving the inks around and they're doing a little dance with the paper. Whereas these ones, the inks and the sponges tend to um, react with the paper. Let's see if we can get some purple onto here. Let's go with our nice wet ink. Here we go. And don't worry about this part. That's the part where the tape is and that quite often will catch. But can you see that the result's not so easy to come by. It's giving marks, which you can work in. The other thing that you can do is use a little bit of uh, glycerine oil to help blend this in. In fact, I'm going to try that, so... Bear with me and I'll get some glycerin oil and then I'll show you what happens. So this is vegetable glycerin oil. I believe it's something like baby oil. It was something that someone like Sheena Douglas mentioned will help with your blending years ago. So at the beginning of my journey, it was the type of thing that I would try. But now that I have different tools, I tend to find that those give me the result that I like. So all I've done is add a little bit of glycerin oil to my mat. And then we'll see if it helps the ink to... Yes, it does. Definitely. It smooths out the ink. So the gliding that we were talking about with the oxides is now happening with these inks. So let's see if we can... Come back over here and just rescue these marks a little bit. Yes, that's blending out. All you need is a tiny touch of the glycerin oil. But there's always ways around it. We can. This is only a piece of paper and we are going to die cut into it. But you can see the difference between this part here and the part where I had the glycerin oil. So... It's a fairly cheap pro product. Let's see if we can just go back into it again. Yep, it's coming. It's coming. Right, now we're going to move into our blues. Let's see if we've got a blue there. Yep, we're just going to take another little bit of the glycerin oil. And we'll try it without first and we'll see what happens. Because we've got a lot of ink here. Because this was another wet. Remember, it was this one here. And it's another wet. So we're going to go off the paper and on. Now that, again, gives you an entirely different feel. This Alter New is very different to these Mementos. So they're both dye-based inks. But they're just giving you different effects all the time. So just play... See what you like and then go with it. There's no need to go out buying the latest products. They're nice to have, but you will, just with a little bit of practice, get decent results and enjoy the process of what you're doing just by having a little play. So again, that smoothed it over. I've added a tiny little drop of glycerin again. Just to work in that ink. And this time I'm holding the tool on the top of the handle. I am working it in quite a lot. I am having to put 
more pressure onto it and you probably can tell that it's taking me longer to get the similar sort of results that I showed you in the first session. There we go. Let's go back over it again, see if we can get rid of any of those marks with the glycerin. Yeah, that's working. Now, this is quite a basic introduction to working with these inks. And they're really for the ladies in the group who just want to give it a go. But I can come back again and show you some other things to do. But essentially, I wanted to show you that you can use any tool any of these types of inks, use your dye-based inks, your pigment inks, uh, try it with some smooth paper. I think we'll leave this one without any water on it and then we'll have a look and see the different effects that we can get. So now we'll move on to trying to put our cards together. We're now at the stage where we want to decide which part of our inky backgrounds we're going to use. So I'm taking the panel die from this particular set and this is going to be the base of my card. And the, all that will happen is you will move this around and die cut the area that you want. Then you can keep the other parts for cutting out letters or cutting some flowers keep all the bits that you've used but this is a really good way to frame your colors and to see that you don't have to include the whole sheet it also takes away all the imperfections so if you did have rough edges it doesn't matter you're just using the die to cut away the part that you want so I'm going to imagine that my die will be there. Then I look at, let me move this out of the way. Then I look at how I want to frame it and what colour I'm going to use. So this gives me a, a stark frame with the colours that I like. Let's go with the, just by adapting it slightly. I think I prefer the navy blue to the black because it reminds me more of a sky. So let's try the purple. Yeah, that blends a bit too much for me. I almost want to frame the colours that I've created. So at this stage, I'm thinking I'm going to go into that area there. And I'm going to go with the navy blue die cut. But things could change. But we'll die cut that one out. And then we'll put the card together. And we'll see what happens. So let's move on to the other techniques that we went with. So you remember we had the honeycombed frame. With our mottled kind of sand dune effect. Now this reminds me of dripping honey so I would take that section out there as my background or I could indeed do it with the navy blue I think I still prefer the orange because I'm thinking bees but you can move them down so that you've got the navy blue with the orange so that might be a possibility but I actually really, really liked the off-cut piece. Remember the off-cut piece that I was working on? I think that works beautifully, as does that. Because I'm imagining that I'm going to put some bees on the front, maybe reinsert some of these honeycombed pieces. This is the original stencil. And again, that works because you can move the honeycombed piece around and it's almost like you've got the honeycomb behind you. So can you see what I'm doing? I'm literally 
playing with the colours and with the patterns that I've created. That works beautifully because I like that because you've got the white. But we'll go for the purpose of the cards that we're making today. We'll go with our original technique and we'll go with probably that orange there. So then our final little linking up was the last set of inks with those small round blenders. And again, we could take away all of these imperfections. It has dried out really well, but if you look really, really closely, you can still see that blue where I, where I plonked it on. But all you need to do is to take your top die cut and move it to the area that appeals to you and no one will know that there is a blue smudge there so we'll either go quite fancy work with the black for this one but again i won't know until i get to that stage so all that i will do is i will cut out my mats and then i will put together the cards we're at the stage where we want to put the card together now. So this is the first inked background that I have die cut using one of the panel dies. And I've added some foam tape to this because I like to give some dimension to it. I've also stuck three of the die cut loops and bubbles together. And this will be stuck onto here. So we've got a navy blue background as our base and then as we're putting this together we want to think about how the frame, the loop and bubble is almost enhancing the background that we've made. So if you're ever stuck with these types of dies then think of them as a background piece, think of them as a way of adding more dimension to your cards rather than something that you've got to decorate it's almost even though it's at the foreground it's almost the background to your card if that makes sense so let's get these taken off there we go And this will become our next layer. Put that out of the way. And I really like the effect of this, how you've got this sky with the light coming across it. And you wouldn't really think that that was just a few rock sides that we smushed across the page. So it's a very effective technique so then this is our main die and you can use spray adhesive for this but um, this will work for me for now but do give it time to settle and lay on your inked piece allow time between each process so that you can flatten your paper because you'll find you'll end up with a much neater finish so then we'll lay this onto here now because I'm so pleased with the inked background that has almost become the focal point to the card so you don't need a lot of extra added pieces so from this stage i then would go for my sentiment so this has got sticky back on it so i'm just going to lightly lay that there while i decide where the other components go with this particular die, I keep all of the extra pieces. So I have some, I'm just going to lay a block on here to flatten it down a little bit. Right, I've got a better base there now. 
And then what I will do is I'm going to add some little bit of bling. I don't want to cover up all of this background, but you can use a shape just to see now I like the effect on that. So I'm going to pop that one into there. We only need a few more pieces, but I will keep it as an odd number. So then that will go, yeah. So these are almost like our stars or our planets in the sky. So then to bring our eye over to this side of the card again, we want one in there. And then because we want to, there we go. And then these are some stars that I've die cut out. And I could add some smaller ones. Maybe to here to make a trio at this point. So I've almost got a trio here. And then my sentiment. And then I think we might just go... Let's bring this one over. Oops. No, it doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. Right, so let's glue these into place. When I come to these fiddlier dies, as I don't want too much glue on the cardstock. Take a takeaway lid or a piece of plastic, anything you like. And then that allows me to adhere the piece. And did I stick that one there? I don't think so. No, nope, there we go. Let's put one more piece in there. go and then we want to put just a little bit of glue on this one here it is it is like a sticky back but um, a little bit more glue won't do it any harm so let's take some of it off and then we'll pop that into there so in a way your sentiment is the is the talking point of the cover so today can just go and become yesterday already, which I think is quite apt for the times that we're experiencing at the moment. So that is card number one finished. And that was background number one using our oxide inks and a little bit of water. So now let's move on to card number two. Let's move these out of the way. Now, this was the Distress inks where we uh, smushed the ink around with our brushes and the um, masks and things like that. So, this was the original colour and I wanted a little bit more dimension to it. So, I just took a couple of mucky background stamps and, and added them over the top. But again, it was die cut out. So let's pop that onto our, I'm just going to flatten this card. So once you've made all the elements up, once you've done your die cutting and you've done your inking and your stamping, these are relatively easy cards to make. So let's take off again. I've added dimension. with my foam so because these are simple cards um, you don't want them to look too flat you want somebody to open it look at it and and turn it around um, I know it adds to the cost of postage but most of these can be sent as large letters yep right 
then I took the honeycomb frame that I had and again I layered it up two or three times and you can see why I added that brown just to add a little bit more interest and to lift the colour. The frame underneath is a slight golden yellow so all the time you're adding interest to to the card. My PVA style glue. So I'm just going to bring over that stamping block. And then it allows me to press it down. And then because of the honeycombed die cup that we've got, I thought about bees. So you remember the inky background that was almost the excess where I was showing you how to make an ombre. I have used that to give myself some die cuts. So... This is the way that I work out my letters. So I'm going to add the word B. So I've got some die cut alphabets. And I use the framework, the off cut of the letters to help me lay out the card. I also die cut the B's in different colours from that ombre. And then I would decide which one would pop up more against this background. So the B is going to sit here. And then I've got another sentiment that says spread your wings and allow yourself to fly. I think these were from Barbara Gray at Clarity Stamps. So I know that that is my triangle, my three my three. Um, focal points of my card. And that is card number two. So that was using the Distress Inks and um, our brushes, our long-handled brushes. There we go. We'll flatten that one down as well. Right, so card number three was probably the easiest of them and this was with our last set of ink so again I die cut them out there are some little white marks where I had to cut into it because these were the colours that I wanted but I wasn't too bothered because I'm going to cover it with this frame here so we will stick the frame on first And then I think we'll go with a little bit of light to dark. So we've got that pink hinting at the top. And then this is a 6x6 six six card blank. And then I have used, remember our first card? I have used a snippet of that to die cut out another sentiment here there and then we've got some sticky pads I'm just going to take those off and then we'll put that centrally so it becomes our focal point 
and I think because we haven't so far today we'll add some of my trusty sequins so let's add a little bit of purple and a little bit of pink and we're going to go for a triangle of three which draws your eye around the card so they fit quite nicely into the background so try and put them near the focal point of your card let's try and get the other purple in there whoops that's the only thing with them they do take a little time to pick up and then we'll pop the other one so we've got a, a three which is pleasing to the eye it draws your eye around the card um, and we're also putting it near the wording. Uh, let's use a sticky tool. Here we go. So we lift that up. A little bit in there. Place that down. A little one there. So it's a good way of mixing and matching your old and your new dies. Take that little bit off there. And making all of these different inks and things that you've brought and all the different tools that you've had over the year. See? And that's card And then here are our three finished cards. I hope that I was able to show you that you can use different inks with different tools to create different effects. This was our Distress Oxide with the blending brushes. This was our Distress Inks with the um, taller long handled blending brushes with a little bit of stamping over the top. And these were our everyday inks with the um tools with the sponges on the top so three different style cards i hope you enjoyed it felt like a workshop really in using inks and using your various tools to good effect and perhaps a little hint on a few ways to lay out your cards using these types of dies Please do like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you got on. I really do like to hear from you. Uh, subscribe to my channel and then hopefully you'll be able to come back another day and see some more of my makes. And if you're interested in being a part of my Facebook group, then head to Creative Minds Kind Hearts. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.